Hey everyone, in this video I show you how to create a tileable texture in Blender 2.8. Let's start by deleting everything in our scene. Now that we have some extra space, we can create a new plane. Press Shift A and select Mesh and then Plane. By default, my plane has a size of 2 and I'm gonna leave it like that. With this set, we can start sculpting. To create a tileable texture, we can make use of the symmetry. Here, turn off the mirror and turn on on all axes the tiling. Also check the tile offset. Here I want to keep a tile offset of 1. We'll also make use of dynamic topology for better sculpting. For the detailing I like to use the brush detail, but you can choose whatever detail you feel more comfortable with. When you now start sculpting, you're going to see your strokes are tiled. I will create a wooden floor and actually only going to use the crease brush for it. For this part it's really handy to have a graphic tablet, even a really simple one. After I had the main shape of the wooden planks, I went over them again to deepen the lines more and then adding details. For wooden details I like to use the crease brush again. First carving lines into the wood and then using the add method to pull other lines more out. This is giving the texture a nice stylized look. I'm happy with my texture like this. So let's switch back to the layout tab. Before I'm going to start doing anything else, I want to rename my plank so I can keep it later on apart. I will call it something like high poly. Next I'm going to create a new plane and this time I'm going to change the size to 1. So it's exactly half the size of our original plane. I want to also rename the smaller plane to low poly and then switch to the shading tab. We're going to set up now a material for the low poly plane to bake all the information of the high poly plane to the low poly. With the smaller plane selected, we can choose an existing material and then create a new image texture. Next, click on new to create an image. Name it and I will give it a size of 2k. This image will be our normal map, so maybe also name it normal. And for this image, we don't need an alpha channel. I like to see my image, so on the drop down on the left, I can now choose the image and then see the result. Currently, it's only black, so we want to change that. In the render settings on the right, change the render engine to cycles. With cycles as rendering engine, we have baking options. Here, you can choose the baking type normal and enable selected to active. For the ray distance, choose a value greater than zero. To bake the high poly information to the low poly plane, first select the high poly and then with shift the low poly and then click on bake. When the baking is finished, we can check out the result. Therefore, just hide the high poly plane and then select the low poly again. To connect the texture with the shader, create a new normal map. Press shift A and choose normal map under menu vector. In the end, connect both. In the 3D view, you should now be able to see the pattern. To see the tileable effect, switch back to the layout tab. Now enter edit mode and duplicate the plane with shift D. Now move the new plane for exactly one unit to the left and repeat the same for the other side. Next select all three faces and then duplicate again. Move them along the Y axis at one and then do the same for the other side. When you now change to look dev or rendered view, you can see your tileable texture is tiling perfectly and you don't see any seams. Our normal texture is now ready, so next we're going to create the diffuse texture. Therefore, change back to shading. Here, we're going to create a new image texture again. Press Shift A and then under texture, choose image texture. Click on new again to create a new image. This one, we're going to rename and call it something with color at the end. I'm going to leave a size of 2k and in this case we also don't need the alpha channel. I didn't save the normal image yet, so I'm just going to do that by clicking on the menu and then saying save image. In the drop down I'm going to now select the newly created image again. I don't want to paint everything again that I just sculpted before, so I'm going to use the high poly mesh to actually get my diffuse texture. Unhide the high poly mesh and select it. For the high poly mesh, we're now also going to create a material. Click on new beside the material and give it a specific name. Now press shift A to create a new node. But instead of creating a texture, go to input and then selecting attribute. In the name field, type call. Next, switch from object mode to vertex paint. 
choose now in the paint menu to enter dirty vertex colors. To get a darker result, you can also do this step again and select dirty vertex colors one more time. To see those colors also in object mode, connect the output color of the attribute to the input base color of the shader. When we now switch back to object mode, we can see the result. To change this map to a bit more brownish, we can add a color ramp in between the attribute and the shader. Here, change the black values to maybe a really dark brown, and then the light values to a lighter brown. If you want, you can also add some colors in between to give the wood a little bit more interesting look. The result of this doesn't have to be perfect, because we can still paint over it. With this done, let's bring back our low poly plane. With the low poly selected, make sure the right material texture is selected, and then first select the high poly mesh and with shift the low poly. In the bake settings, change the bake type to diffuse, deselect indirect and direct lighting, and click on bake. The result is this time not looking as expected, because we changed the geometry of the low poly plane. To fix this, we can simply reorder the UV or we can delete all faces surrounding the original plane. I will go with the second option. So in the layout tab, select the low poly plane and go into edit mode. Here select all the faces surrounding the centered one and then delete them with X. Now back into the shading tab, we can do the baking process again. So first select the high poly and with shift the low poly and then click on bake. Now the result is finally looking like we would expect it. Make sure to also save this image to the hard drive. You can now connect the image texture's output color to the input base color of the shader. And then if you hide the high poly, you can see your result. If you want to paint over the texture to add some more details, switch back to the layout tab and repeat what we did before. So select the low poly, go back in the edit mode and then duplicate it to all sides. If you switch now to the texture painting mode, you can paint on the plane and it will automatically be tiled. When painting, just make sure that you don't get too close to the edges. I'm just going to go over the texture and darken a bit in between the planks and then also using a lighter color to emphasize the planks a bit more. I also like to add a little bit more color to the wood, for example a bit of red or green to give it a more interesting look. And that's it. Just make sure to save your image at the end. I would be really happy if you give this video a thumbs up, especially if you like it. And of course, if you have any questions, just leave a comment.